Hello, all you crazy people, and welcome to another video. And welcome to this very Merry Christmas. I hope you all have been enjoying your holidays as much as I've been enjoying playing Software Inc. Software Inc. is this incredible tech company management game where you can build, furnish, maintain office buildings, hire employees, develop, design, and support research and market different softwares using teams that are in the game. You can also build roads and ease commuting for all of your many different employees which you hire inside of the game. You can tend to those employees' needs, demands, and skills as well, while making sure each team is compatible. You can customize your own avatar and even the avatars of different employees if you have mods. You can also set up different servers and source controls and even running your own online store. This game is incredible. And that's whilst ignoring the fact that it has its own simulated economy with different companies and software is automatically being generated. This game goes so in depth, it's insane. And that's why I love Software Inc. as a game. It is one of the first games I ever bought on Steam, and I've never regretted the decision. Now, as someone who codes games, every time I'm playing a game, I'm thinking about how each of the different aspects were designed and made. And when thinking about Software Inc., I realized how difficult it is. It had to have been to design and develop this incredible game. So I decided to see whether I could do it. Not all of the features per se. And I, I didn't even come close to doing, to creating all of the different unique and interesting features that are in Software Inc. But I was able in my short period of time to do loans and servers and many different aspects of the Software Inc. game. Now of course my game isn't going to be three D because I don't I, I I don't have enough time and I just want this to be a two episode series. So it's gonna be a two D game which may or may not have a building system similar to that of Academia and Prison Architect. But before I go off ramping about all the different features I added to my game Let's get right into the video, explaining from beginning to end how I created my clone of Software Inc, which I'm calling Company Inc, mostly because Business Inc was taken. And also some of the features are kind of based off this other game called Game Dev Tycoon, which is another great game, but I don't have much time to explain about why I love that game so much. So, I started where most of my games usually start. The UI. In, in the beginning, I mostly set up the UI related to all the related to money, time, employees, fans, that type of thing. So the basic UI that will show you all of your different stats. The game is set up so that one second in our real time is equivalent to one minute inside of the game. And you can speed this up to 100 times if you really wanted to go along the game super quickly. Another part of the UI code I did was draggable windows. So now when playing your software company game, you can move your windows just like your well, windows and you're moving around a window. I don't think I've ever had to say windows so much in my entire life before. However, before I go on for way too long talking about UI code, let's go on to the next bit of little coding information thing. I don't know. The money vase class. Well, at least that's what I called it. This class basically just kept about uh, kept track of all the different expenses you had in your company. So let's say utilities would be kept track of server costs, em employee salaries, that type of stuff would all be kept care of thanks to the money vase class that I could easily move around everywhere because it's a class. Classes are the best in code, just incredible things. And I'll use classes a lot in this project because of how much 
different information. I had to move between different scripts and different game objects. But anyways, on to the next thing. Employees. So, um, the employees, this was kind of just something quick I got done. I'm not the proudest when it comes to this system, and it's definitely lacking compared to the employee system that is available on Software Inc. But it's something I could get done in less than a, in like a couple hours. In like an hour, I had to finish it because it's just like keeping track of one integer. It's not really that difficult. But if I want to go more in depth when it comes to employees, I can, and that's great. On to the next thing. The projects class. This really just kept track on when your project was made, whether it has a sequel, how much sales it has, and that type of stuff. The same things I kept track on in the software ink. It's not the most advanced system, but if I do it correctly, I can make it match up to software ink. However, because the project system is possibly the hardest thing I'll have to do in this entire game that I'm creating. I'm going to have to leave it off for another episode. I was not able to complete it in this week because I kept procrastinating. Which is a bit of an issue. And I also spent a bunch of time gaming and learning how to code in React. React JS. So I don't have much time to spend on this project system, which is unfortunate. I really want to get this game done within this first episode, but hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? Now on to the most impressive thing I did in this entire episode, loans. Yeah, it's just a loan system that's incredibly realistic if I say so myself. In fact, my loan system is better than the one that is in Software Inc. According to me, don't ask anyone else about their opinion because mine is the only one that matters. And after doing a little bit of Control C, Control V, I had the server system working. Of course, it was a little bit more compli complicated than Control C and Control V to the loan code, but it wasn't really that much more complicated. So, remember to reuse as much code as you can. Because the more code you can reuse, the faster you can get your projects done. So make your code very modular. And I kind of did that in this episode. Not the furthest extent, but hey, I'm proud of my system. I'm proud of my server system. And on to the next thing, which is menus. Yeah, I just added a game over slash bankruptcy scene, whatever you... A uh, window, not scene. And I also added the pause window, the settings window. I haven't added the main menu yet, but hey, it's only like one line of code to get that done. So I'm not too stressed about that right now. Menus, uh, the main menu isn't really the most important thing, especially before I've released the game at all. And, wow, this um, this episode is dragging on a little bit. I have a couple of things I could show you, but I don't think I have much time to do this. I only get this episode done before 10 minutes. So, on to gameplay. Yeah, this is just a little bit of gameplay about the game from about a, f a little bit like 30 seconds worth of gameplay. Uh, give or take. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. And I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you all for all the achievements you've done. Like how this channel grew infinitely when it comes to both subs and views. Get it? Because at the beginning of the year we had like zero subs and zero views. And now we have like a bunch of views and 14 subs. So infinitely because... Okay. Yeah. See you guys next time. Goodbye.